What's up guys, it's your boy Kurt, coach of the Emerald and Nemerus, bringing you week 3 of the LET versus Eli and his March of the Ice Cube. As you can see this week we've got the Sneasler, this was just another White Herb Sneasler, there was no point in trying to be anything special with Psychic Seed, even though I did bring the Ndidi. Then we have the Screamtail, this was a offensive bulk up Screamtail, this thing just absolutely tore a shred through this team if I could position it correctly. And then we just have a defensive Vaporeon again with Wish Protect and Surf just to be a general obnoxious Pokemon. And then we have the Ndidi. This was an offensive Ndidi this week and I really loved the amount of damage that it could put out against this team. Then we have the Iron Treads. We have the Carbink. Iron Treads was just a Life Orb attacker, it was just there to do damage. And Carbink was a fun Calm Mind Iron Defense set with Terra Ground, because this is one of my other Terra Captains that I've finally been able to bring. And Terra Ground, defensive, but also like set up in uh, Carbink, went absolutely crazy. So here we are in the team preview, and I'm looking at it, and my Sneasler just goes absolutely insane on this team. If I can get the hit off onto anything uh, that isn't Dragapult and get the close combat off on a pivot, I just win. And so that that was my game plan, was to just get the Sneasler to go absolutely crazy. So I'm just going to leave with Ndidi because he doesn't really have a check to this other than King Gambit, and if he leaves with King Gambit then I would just pivot out to my Vaporeon that is there to deal with it, which is fine. So we're just going to lead with the Ndidi because I have no fear, I'm thinking it's going to be an offensive Ursa Luna here, so again that's my safest lead, if he is an offensive Ursa Luna I can take one and I do and I do, do like 60 odd percent with an offensive Ndidi Psychic. So we'll get into the battle here as I'm going to leave with the Ndidi as he is going to lead with Blaze the Ursa Luna. So this was just the previous energy ball for me, I had no reason not to, but I could also Psychic as well because I didn't I didn't want the Talonflame to come in either, so it was a it was a tough choice. I was sitting here thinking, does do I click energy ball, do I click psychic? Is he gonna protect on me? Like what's what's he gonna do here? So we're just looking over it, and I'm not sure how I'm gonna handle this just yet. This Pokemon is genuinely terrifying. If it gets set up, I don't really switch into it. So I need to get as much damage as possible, even if it means sacking my Ndidi here. So I'm just gonna go for the Psychic, because his only switch in is the King Gambit, and I'm not too worried about that. So we go for the Psychic, and he does reveal he is the Assault Vested Ursa Luna. As he's just gonna go for the Body Slam get a really, really annoying para because I could kill this thing here if he didn't get this para. So, um, so we're gonna try and get the we're gonna try and get the para uh, get the psychic off in case he wants to go for something else, try and set up trailblaze or something. But he's gonna go for the earthquake. He is gonna kill Ndidi, so that's unfortunate. Ndidi does go down, but it does put me in a much better spot because now I know that he is a salt vest with Ursa Luna. He's not an offensive Ursa Luna. He's very bulky to take that hit. So I'm just gonna go out into uh, Screamtail here because I have no reason not to. I did think about going Iron Treads but there wasn't really a whole lot that I gained from going Iron Treads here. I didn't really kill if he was a max HP set with Ice Spinner. I did a lot but I never killed. So going into my Screamtail I knew that I could chew a hit from this thing and I can get a free bulk up off. Like, I have no issue clipping bulk up on this thing. I always lift one because it isn't guts. So we're gonna get the speed boost on the Protosynthesis with the boost of energy, and I'm just gonna fire off the bulk up. I lose nothing by just firing off a bulk up. As I'm just... I'm looking at it, I do think the Drain Punch could potentially kill, but I'm running the Calc. I don't see the guaranteed kill. So my players always do just click bulk up and catch anything that he wants to go into uh, with a plus one stab hit. As he is going to go into the Talonflame as I'm going to click bulk up. So 
So now a plus one, we shoot any one hit from this Talon Flame, and with Psychic Terrain, he can't Brave Bird me with priority. If he wants to burn me, I outspeed him anyway. So I am always safe to just click Bulk Up, because at plus two, I think with a burn, I still killed in Terrain with Psychic Fangs. As he is going to go for the Brave Bird here, and the Psychic Terrain is going to block it. <laughs> no. So we're going to get a free Bulk Up here. I didn't have to worry about the Flare Blitz, which is really nice. There's no Flare Blitz, no Flare Blitz burn. And I'm just going to go straight for the Psychic Fangs. Because if he wants to go into King Gambit, I know I kill the Drain Punch every single time. So, Screamtail picking up the first kill here with killing the Talon Flame. And we're now plus two defense, plus two attack. So, nothing really Okos me here unless he brings in a Scarf Pult. A modest Scarf Pult. So he is actually going to bring out the King Gambit uh, with the one strength from the Fallen Ally. And I'm just going to go for the Drain Punch. I did think about clicking Play Rough here, uh, but Drain Punch was always the better play if he isn't Terra. But he is going to go for the Terra. He's going to bring out the Terra Fairy on the King Gambit, which is super annoying because if I click Play Rough, I do hit KO this Pokemon. And I still had a pretty healthy screen tail. So that's unfortunate. Uh, the Drain Punch is still going to do about 10-ish percent, which tells me he's a very bulky King Gambit, he's not offensive. And he's going to bring out Thunder Wave. Like, I've, I'm not sure why he was Thunder Wave here, why he brought against my team Thunder Wave, because I'm always going to kill him with Sneasel anyway if he's Terra Fairy. And if he's not, then he dies to a close combat from Sneasel, so I'm not sure about that one personally. But he's just then going to go for the Iron Head. We still have Speed and Player Up doing about 50%, which is really nice. So I'm just going to go for the Player Up again. I lose nothing by clicking Player Up. He doesn't have a resist anymore. So he's going to sack the King Gambit. And Screamtail is going to get two kills here. Bulk up Screamtail proving its worth. And we've still got a relatively healthy team. Uh, my Vaporeon's still at full. My Sneeze is still at full. My Iron Treads are still full, and so is my Carbink. I thought about switching here, um, if he goes for the Hex. Because it was an obvious Hex that he could have brought, if he's going to bring it in on the Dragapult. No reason to ever switch though, as I don't really have a specially defensive Mon, as I've lost my Ndidi to that para earlier. Again, if I had that, if I didn't get that para, maybe I could have had Ndidi here as a sack to scout if he was choice locked. As he is going to go for the Shadow Ball. That was a relatively bulky set, but I still died to the Shadow Ball here. So unfortunately, Screamtail is going to go down, but it does pick up the two kills beforehand. Huge, huge dubs for the Screamtail there. And I'm just stuck here, what I want to go into. And I actually opt to go into Carving, because I just want Carving to start doing things. Carving, clicking buttons would be the funniest thing. But so, would, uh, so would Vaporeon because he doesn't really kill Vaporeon, and if he's choice locked, then I'm fine. So again, just looking, just looking. I looked at Iron Treads, but I always die. So we are going to just bring in the Carving, I think. Still debating it, running Calcs, not sure what I want to do here. Yeah, I think Carving is my safest play after doing the Calcs. The Shadow Ball from Specs never two hit KOs me. Because I am relatively fat. I'm just going to go for the Calm Mind here. So, the Calm Mind Iron Defense set. As he is going to switch the Dragapult out. And bring back in the Ursa Luna. This thing is a, just an absolute monster. I did think about clicking the Iron Defense on the switch. But Calm Mind was my second play in case he stayed in. Because then my Moonblast is doing a lot of damage if he wants to pivot out. So now, I'm stuck. And I'm just going to go for the Iron Defense. I lose nothing by Iron Defensing, it then tells me what his set is. So I thought about Terra Grounding here, but I felt like I might still need the Sneasler to Terra Ghost later to kill the Dragapult, depending on his HP spread. So I didn't want to I didn't want to get overzealous by clicking by clicking the Terra too early like I have done before. As I'm gonna go for the Iron Defense as he reveals Trailblaze. So he's Body Slam, Earthquake, and Trailblaze, and I wasn't sure what his last move was. There wasn't really anything that was jumping to mind. I'm going to click Iron Defense again, now that I'm plus two. I live any one hit from this. 
this is going to go for the Earthquake and get an absolute max roll on this thing, so I'm just not getting any rolls in my favor. I'm not getting anything go my way. As I'm now thinking about Terra Grounding Earth Powering, but I don't live the Earthquake anyway uh, very well, and I still die to do Earthquakes, even with Terra Ground. So after running that cow, I felt like it was better to just click the raw Earth Power. I couldn't take that chance. If I was body pressed here, I just killed this Ursa Luna, which is unfortunate, but what do you do? Earth Power doing about 25% is still pretty nice. Uh, maybe if I Moonblasted I could have done more damage? Not sure. This is going to go for the Trailblaze, so he's going to be plus two for this Ursa Luna. Which is super, super annoying, like... This Pokemon just should not still be sitting here on my screen. So, we're going to bring out the Vaporeon because I live any one hit from this thing. There was no hesitation in that. I wasn't sure what his speed spread was to outspeed the Sneasler, whether he could or not. So I thought about it as Ice Beaming, but Surf was my better play because even if he goes Electrode... Oh no, sorry, Ice Beam was my safe play because if he goes Electrode, then I still catch the Electrode on the Switch. This is going to go for the Trailblaze and do no damage. Honestly, that we just shoot a hit. So that was really, really nice. Trailblaze bouncing. We're going to click the Ice Beam. And we're going to get some leftovers recovery, and I always need this thing to be healthy. So I'm going to toss off a wish, because I need this thing to not live, uh, not die to the Dragapult coming in, based on the damage. So we're going to toss off the wish. And we don't die to the Earthquake now, so I can always just not have to worry about this. I could have gone into Treads, but I always live in Earthquake from here. So I'm going to click Surf now, because he's going to Body Slam and he's going to get the para on the Vaporeon 2. I just, I just don't understand the luck on this on this match. He gets a second para on the first Body Slam both times. So Vaporeon's going to get the kill on the Ursa Luna, as we are going to get the Wish back to being up over half. So I always live one from Dragapult, and I always live any hits from Donphan that he's still got left in the back. So, just gonna see what he's gonna go into. If he goes into Electrode, my play is to always sack this Pokemon. Uh, I have no reason not to sack the Vaporeon. It doesn't help me long term versus the Donphan. Now that I do have the Paralyze, I don't outspeed it. So, unfortunate, but you know, what do you do? This is always the sackable Pokemon. Is he just gonna go into the Electrode? And I'm just gonna click Ice Beam. I have no reason not to just click Ice Beam. As he is just going to reveal the Leaf Storm. And he's going to kill the uh, kill the Vaporeon. And Electrode is now at minus 2. He's not White Herb. He's not a Jet Pack. So I don't have to worry about him pivoting around. I thought about going Sneasel here. But my play was always to go into the Iron Treads. Because Iron Treads is just going to help me long term. So... If I can get this Rapid Spin off, I can outspeed his entire team, even Dragapult, unless he's Scarf. So I'm going to click Rapid Spin, and we're going to see what he's going to go for, but we unfortunately get the Para. And so we're going to have to try and reconnect and work out how we're going to get this battle back to where we are. So once that happens, I will see you guys back here with the battle at the point that we are currently in. One eternity later. So after multiple attempts to make this work, uh, we are now back at the spot we were with the minus two electrode and my iron treads in front of it. So we're going to click the rapid spin here again like I was going to before. My play has not changed. I'm not sure what he's going to go for, uh, but he could always switch into the Don Fan, which he is going to do. He's going to switch into the Don Fan. So we're going to get a rapid spin off, break the sturdy on this thing, and it's still not looking amazing. I still need to somehow get Sneasel in on a weakened Don Fan so that I can close combat and not have to worry about taking an Earthquake to the face. So I'm going to click Ice Spinning here because I also want to catch in case he wants to go Electrode, in case he wants to go Dragapult on the resistant hit, on the neutral hit. My player is to Ice Spinner. 
and scout for what set this is. So this is a full Fizz Def Don fan. He had a lot of bulky defensive mons to try and check my offensive threats. So we're going to live the, second, the Earthquake here, which again reveals to me that he is not adamant, he doesn't have any attack investment. This is purely a full Fizz Def Don fan. I'm going to go for the Earthquake and put him in the perfect range for Sneasler to come in on this next turn and just go absolutely mental with this team. So we're going to go out into the Sneasler and my players who always just click the uh, click the close combat and then from there it's just a wash because I always Oko the Dragapult with Shadow Claw and Terra. Hey, boss. Or I Oko the, dra uh, the Electrode with Diaclaw. So my players do always just CC here. I'm not worried about the Dragapult coming in. He never wants to sack to this thing. So with Sneasler getting that kill, I am now just going to leave you with a nice little montage of Sneasler cleaning up the game for me. I'm back, it's fucking boy. With the terror until it is done. And with that, we have beaten Eli in a nice, close 1-0 game. This could have gone his way, could have gone my way. It was a very touch and go the entire battle. So GG's to Eli. And that was a really, really nice game. Uh, so next week, so we're now, sorry, we're now 2-1 plus 5, I think, after the 0-0 loss. So I will see you guys next week when we take on Shadow Stitch.